Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next uh, Borto Next Generations episode review. This one's going to be for episode 6, which is called The Final Lesson. So yeah, another really, really good episode, continuing the great start that this show has had. And this definitely felt like the first, like, uh, really notable episode. Um, <clears throat> because obviously it was... Um, one of the, you know, Jonian characters, in this case, Shino, you know, obviously being the kind of, uh, the big fight of the episode. So it, it was definitely presented as, like, a notable thing of just how are all of these characters who have more or less just started the Academy going to take down Shino. And while, while perhaps the start of the episode was a little slow in getting going, I liked what they did with this episode, and that they didn't include too many characters to focus throughout the whole thing remained on Shino, Borzo, Shikadai, and uh, Mitsuki. And by the end of the episode, it was a really, really solid episode for development for Shino, who needed development from original Naruto uh, and Shippuden, and Mitsuki got some solid development as well, given some of the reveals we got about him. So, the initial one that we got was obviously that he demonstrated his... Um, extending arms uh, jutsu or ju it just seems like a natural thing his body can do almost uh, the way he doesn't really seem to use any signs for it but um, we're not exactly sure about that but that came in very uh, handy throughout this episode and you know they, they continue to set up the idea that Mitsuki has an idea about Borto and his powers and potentially has an idea of what this enemy is that they're facing that's able to possess characters, and um, hence why he sort of knows that Borto can see them. But uh, they're not really revealing anything about that right now, but I assume that will, will come into play eventually. But the, the main thing with uh, Mitsuki was that when they finally decided that, okay, we have to deal with this here. We are kind of trapped in this forest because of the wide area of effect that Chino has because of his insects. He's not going to let us out of the forest to contact anyone to get anyone else in. We have to do this ourselves. And... In previous situations like this, the only way to basically take out the person who um, is under the influence of this shadow is to knock them out, and that means the shadow will leave them. How are they going to do that with Shino? So uh, Mitsuki immediately kind of decided that, like, we have to commit to attacking him like we're going to kill him, that the only way to end this is to kill him. We can do that if we just go full all in on him, but... Shikadai and Borto both didn't want to do that, and it made for an interesting piece of character development for Mitsuki, knowing that, oh, like, he, he feels that he almost has nothing to learn coming to the village. The only thing he's really come here for is to figure out if Borto is going to be this person to kind of, uh, in a way, guide him just through his personality. But here he's kind of seeing that, like, oh, he is going to learn a lot here from interacting with people, the teachers, and, and so on. Because what he learns here is that if you come up with a good enough plan, if you use teamwork well enough, if you use your jutsu in the correct way, you can end situations saving everyone and with a different outcome than initially seems like will be the case. So, obviously Mitsuki went into this thinking that, oh, if we all work together we can kill Shino, but we have to restrict the plan and go through all these other steps to do it without killing him. And... He ends up putting himself on the line when, with, the, with the plan that they come together with, with um, Borto doing a good shadow clone attack to basically distract a lot of the insects, and Shigadai then kind of guiding him into position with the shadow paralysis, them getting captured using more of his insects, and that allowing Mitsuki to basically, uh, under cover of logs basically, just like act like he's just standing there, when in fact he's having his, uh, his extending arms go under the water to grab Shino, and he demonstrates this, what was a snake lightning uh, jutsu, that uh, basically was the thing that knocked Shino out temporarily, and using his last outs of strength, basically throws Shino out of the water, but realizes he's actually in pursuit of this goal of like, you know, taking out Shino without killing him, has actually gone overboard, but he's managed to realize that you can do things in these other ways. Clearly suggesting that where he comes from, he was kind of primarily told to just do all missions with the intent to kill, never come up with a plan that doesn't involve that, which, if they go into more of his backstory, is going to be really interesting to see why he was kind of sent to the village in the first place to, like, learn this, and, and so on. But, um, definitely, 
you know, I wouldn't say amazing development, but like just the start of like that really, really interesting take on this character who comes across as basically almost like a, a villain in the making, just with his personality and the fact that he doesn't necessarily care about killing people. But through meeting the other characters, is kind of learning to see things from their perspective that he can have fun, that they can end fights without killing each other, and, and so on. So I, I kind of like that, and, and and again the reference to Borto potentially being his uh, you know, his son, his like the symbolic son that's kind of guiding him into the light, um, it, that that came across as well, and that he ultimately agreed to the plan to not attempt to kill Shino, and it ended up working out with. Um, Borto first coming to save Mitsuki and then also Shino getting up and having the big hero moment of this episode of you know him him basically being out of chakra but to save two of his students who he, he's put at risk you know by being controlled he gets into the water uses um I think that's one of the first times we've seen Shino just use a straight up like summoning jutsu like that we've we've known he's been able to do like a kind of summoning thing where like it's basically like calling insects from around the place to him but I think this was one of the first times we've seen him use probably the first time just use a flat out you know giant insect summon so that was cool to see that he actually has some other abilities beyond just the like manipulating swarms of uh, bugs that he uses here um, and that ends up saving everyone um, which obviously leads to the big nice emotional moment at the end where Throughout the whole episode, you know, Borto and Shikadai especially were kind of realizing that it's kind of their fault in a way that caused Shino to get into this emotional state, which allowed him to be possessed, and them apologizing, you know, properly at the end and getting a greater respect for Shino come the end of the episode, and that they not only, I suppose, see how dedicated he is to his students by the fact that he saved them in the end, but how strong he is when he kind of puts his mind to it, and that he's he's actually worth learning from because he is Jonin level and he is on the level of, you know, you know, Shikamaru's father and, and that sort of thing. So that was a, <clears throat> a nice notable moment from the end of the episode in that Shino was almost ready to resign from the school, but just them apologizing like that is, was enough to kind of uh, keep him on board. And he's, he gets quite emotional by the end and that like, this is kind of what he wanted from like teaching to kind of get this sort of a, uh, respect reaction from his students and uh, having Mitsuki in the end also learn that 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 there's there's something he can learn from Shino as well that you know what what can this guy teach me because it, it I think they're definitely presenting Mitsuki as like the guy who almost knows everything he's going to learn in the academy and is is wondering why he's there and why he can't just like be in the village and interact with Boruto to figure out if he's the person he thinks he is and um, but uh, yeah, last big scene of the episode is obviously when Shino goes to see um, Naruto and also uh, Shikamaru, which obviously it's fitting in that he goes to see basically the parents of the two new kids that were the ones that more or less kind of caused this whole thing to happen. And they're basically very, you know, they, they, they praise Shino basically for how he handled the situation and kind of note that if you had actually attacked them not being possessed, if you had attacked them as you, they wouldn't have got out of this. Just showing that they respect Shino's power, um, even though he was often the forgotten one of that group uh, in like Shippuden and the original Naruto. So I, I like that respect that there is for, for Shino, even though he's like the, the academy teacher now, that they still respect his power and what he can do. and. They basically just realized that, okay, we now have to start investigating what caused this to happen. Um, it was, it was you know, a bit of a problem when, you know, some of the kids were getting possessed. But now it is a huge problem that Jonin level uh, ninjas are able to be possessed. In that, it's obviously presenting the idea of, like, what if Rock Lee got possessed? He can use eight inner gates. Uh, what if Naruto got possessed? Um, I assume he probably has a... He, him having the nine tails can immediately fight that off. I assume that's going to be something that they maybe establish at some point that just Naruto's immune just because, like Genjutsu, Kurama can just snap him out of it. But like Shikamaru, if he got possessed, Sakura, if she got possessed, th those type of characters who may not immediately have um, counters to being possessed in this way um, could be a huge danger to the village. Um, 
even like Choji is really destructive. Uh, but uh, that's just an <clears throat> interesting setup that now, in the background, the kind of more experienced characters, the stronger characters, are investigating. Uh, but at the whole time, very few characters know that Borto is actually the one who can see all of this happening. So, uh, how they connect all this together and finally do the reveal about what's happening, we're not entirely sure because next week's episode looks like it's probably going to maybe not involve the main plot. It, it looks like it's going to be a Chocho focused episode, potentially on some sort of like romance stuff and focusing on her eating habits or something like that. They may do something like where she is the one who gets possessed because maybe she's insulted for her weight or something like that and um, stuff like that happens. Not entirely sure. It looks to potentially be the first, you know, not particularly important episode of the show, but it'll also be Chocho's first episode being somewhat of a spotlight. So it, it should be an interesting character focus, even if it's not maybe plot focused all that much but uh yeah that's been the episode review for borto episode six uh, in the comments let me know what your thoughts were on the episode as well as the review but that's been the video for today thanks for watching and bye